good morning good morning all of you we welcoming our sjs uh, societies dr n a mukdum ayurvedic medical college we organize uh, har din uh, har ghar ayurveda under the banner of this uh, webinar regarding the domstra and department of agatantra myself dr ramgonda patil hod uh, department of agatantra dr n a mukdum ayurvedic medical college so today we welcoming all and uh, our the panelist also the keynote addresses and all the participants regarding this webinar who is joining the so heartily welcoming and uh, my i will now hand over the the mic to the our beloved principal sir dr ramesh punkar sir welcome so good morning everybody so today we are uh, starting with our webinar we are running a series of webinar this year and this is uh, conducted by our department of uh, agatantra and vivar ayurveda and we are having all our uh, respected uh, resource persons today damstra here as you are all uh, very well versed in this uh, field i would say a uh, meaning of this is teeth or by the teeth here so this is just a teething wow. program or initial program which will be running for today and uh, without wasting much time i would like to welcome all the guests here first our keynote address dr mahesh sawalgi mat sir who is our well wisher uh, our very good friend and a very good expert in uh, field of uh, agat tantra here and who is having many uh, what you can say success uh, lectures under his belt okay he is available every time which i can uh, vouch on his part so dr mahesh saulgi mat i welcome you sir to this thank webinar. you sir thank you and uh dr chaitra madam who will be talking on the topic traditional approach to snake bite management uh who is from who is associate professor from hasan i welcome you madam to this uh, session today then our next speaker will be dr who will be speaking on a traditional clinical approach to scorpion sting i welcome you sir for this uh, webinar here and uh, last but last but not the least i would welcome all our other teachers or colleagues who are motivating their students and helping us in carrying out our message to the students young students of uh, undergraduate course and all other followers and doctors who are also joining us today in this webinar i welcome you all and i hand over the mic to my colleagues who will be conducting this uh, webinar for today welcome you all thank you so i requested to may saulgimat sir to please address the keynote address our uh, today session thank you sir am i audible uh, yes yeah, sir okay. uh namaste everyone and uh, at the outset i thank me the opportunity sir unmute please unmute very proud to be part of this seminar oh, am i audible yes sir okay so i thank uh, uh, the principal sir and the entire department of agatantra for uh, inviting me to this webinar and uh, like um first time I, as a usually i have been a resource person but first time as a keynote address um when i understood the resource persons like dr chaitra and dr vinod kar sir uh, i felt like what can i speak in front of them so those two are experts uh, in agatantra so i don't want to tell much about you know bites and things you see i too felt that bites and stings are usually you know conditions seen in rural areas or you know uh, people who stay in forest nearby forests and all so uh, i used to think like that but practically even though the bites and stings are seen in rural areas or the people who are involved in agriculture or nearby forest area and all but ultimately those patients the victims of bites and stings they have to travel to the cities only urban areas only to get the right kind of treatment because the treatment facilities that are there in you know uh, uh, 
what you can call rural areas like even including phcs and all there the treatment facilities are not that much you know uh, good in condition so they 100% have to travel to the cities only where we think like we usually won't get you know bites and stings patients but it is practically there that even villages bites and stings are common but the patients reach cities only nearby cities only for the treatment now when it comes to the ayurvedic treatment of bites and stings very commonly people say that you know we, we always keep on complaining rather than telling others like we all always keep on complaining like to manage bites and stings we need uh, you know icu facility we need uh, anti venom therapy you know administration we need a medical officer who can help us in administration of anti venom and all all many times in medical legal aspects also we are not authorized for you know administration of anti venom and all so these are some of the what you can call constraints or hurdles that we face but what i on my behalf say is like if i am not able to manage a fatal condition let it be a scorpion sting or any fatal snake bite or anything let us accept it let me accept it i i need to accept it yes i am not able to manage fatal conditions even if i want to manage i have some legal or medical legal constraints problems are there so then what we need to is i should accept it i should accept and maybe in future we may be you know legally allowed to completely manage snake bite cases and all even including just based on ayurvedic principles but right now we need to show that what we have we have what we can contribute additional than uh, the uh, what you can call contemporary treatment so we need to focus on like i i told i if i am not able to understand if i am not able to treat the fatal conditions let me accept it and i need to focus on what are the areas where the contemporary medicine is failing very commonly that it is said that anti venom works only on the circulating venom so means by the time patient gets bitten by the snake and reaches the hospital by that time whatever venom has caused damage whatever pathology it has caused in the body that is not at all managed by you know contemporary treatment principles or contemporary medicines so because of those complications only patients die like uh, like you know renal failure hepatic failure or cardiac any so many complications most often even after anti venom therapy also patients die because of complications of the bites and stings so that is why we need to focus first on those things like if we are good at managing the bites and bites and stings complications let us start that we need to focus on that we need to work on that we need to develop protocols and all we need to teach the people very importantly that we need to teach the people uh, and second important thing is we need to trust our you know texts what our samhitas say like as acharya charaka says pracharam eva bhikshukasya bijam eva prashakasya sustram budrimata malpam analpa dhyana eva even just a, a phrase or a shloka explained in text itself becomes the source of immense knowledge i will not go into treatment of serpent thing and all but i'll just tell one example like um uh, many times i have told and uh, scorpion sting we used to get um, come uh, like what you can call calls from our students who are in rural areas and all like sir uh, one of patient like around 12 or 1 in the night so it's difficult to you know give any treatment and all at that time so they are not prepared also they do, they are not storing any medicines and all like there is one formulation in ashtanga there is one upanaha ajaji sindava and grita it is to be like you know ajaji common jeera we have to crush the jeera to that sign the ways to be added and little honey sorry little ghee has to be added and that is to be warmed and then at the site of sting little bit upana like bandhan is to be done if it is done 100% patient gets relief from the pain now these type of formulations we do not trust because what it contains jeera namak or ghee common household preparations even say my father in 2015 Uh, in our place in badami we get lots of scorpion things that to of that uh, uh, red one mahavishya kind of we can consider so around one he called me that he had been stung by a scorpion and uh, i i uh, i had no other option to give something which is commonly available so i told him that you drink one full one or two glass full of warm milk with uh, ghee in that and little sugar and then after that i told that um, krita kind of and jeera to apply 
so he did all these things by 120 i think so I, after that i kept on calling my father till morning 8:15 i think some 30 40 times i might have called around 8:30 in the morning he called me why you have called me so many times i just told him i wanted to know what happened after giving that medicine and taking that you know open our hand all over bandage he told maybe in 15 10 15 minutes he slept see this is a formulation simple jeera namak aur ghee hai usme and even what i told milk ghee and sugar sita that is also there in a sangha so what we need to learn first is we need to trust we need to believe what our acharyas are explaining us so we need to understand that and focus on ourselves to develop our skills and potentials based on particular specific areas not like we we it's not the time that we focus on learning everything i will learn this i will learn that and all that is it's the current era is not for that the world don't want us to know don't want to know about us that how how that we are good at those hundreds or thousands of things are we good at hundreds of thousands of things no world wants us to tell what is that one thing that you are good at world society don't want us to know that can you do this can you do that and all no society wants us <coughs> to tell one thing that we are good at second third thing there are other experts are there so we need to focus ourselves like that we need to focus on those things and we need to work on that and we need to develop skills acharya chanakya says one uh, phrase you know, it's one of my favorite quotes from chanakya niti he says ananta shastram bahulascha vidya alpascha kalo bahu vignata cha yat saravutam tad upasaniyam hamsam kshiram eva ambu madhyat hamso yata kshiram eva ambu madhyat but he says ananta shastram shastra science there are so many sciences and individual sciences are also very vast ananta shastram bahulascha well, vidya arts and skills are innumerable alpascha kalaha we have a limited span of time like life span as well as the working span and all giving time to family all those things considering that so we alpascha kalo bahu ignata in that short span of time also we get lots of hurdles to accomplish our aims and all bahu ignata that is why he says yat sarabhutam tad upasaniyam what is the essence of that what we are in so agat tantra like if, we, if if i want to focus on bites and strings what is the essence for me in my place in my area what is the scope for me in that bites and strings i need to focus on that i need to work on that i need to become expert in that so then what happens we too can grow and simultaneously with us the science also grows he says that hamsam metakshiram yomu mata that is as swan drinks only milk even if it is kept mixed with water so likewise we need to uh, like you know focus on developing the things that we are good at where the lacuna is there currently in the contemporary science we should not always say that we too can do this we too can do that and all instead of that where is the gap that gap we need to understand first we need to bridge the gap once we bridge the gap the society even scientific community will start understanding the significance of our science how best we can contribute to the contemporary science they will understand then 100% we can become at least if not 100% mainstream medication we can come near to the mainstream first choice you know treatment of um, any any bites and things and other things also so uh, this is what i wanted to tell so i wish uh, all the success to entire uh, any mugdu mayur college team for organizing this agatantra webinar and i'm very sure uh, sandeep binorkar sir who is expert in uh, scorpion sting management and all he has published lots of scientific works and uh, uh, chaitra madam is also doing lots of clinical studies and uh, she is also good with snake bite management and all she has managed several cases in uh, college asana uh, so Uh, all of you please attend the seminar without skipping till the end uh, because uh, these are the things we very rarely get you know opportunities to attend agada related webinars or seminars and all and you have two great um, uh, edu- highly knowledgeable uh, teachers uh, i call them teachers because they make sure that you learn 
so um, i i thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity and i wish all the success to entire team of this agatantra webinar and um, uh, warm greetings from entire bmk ayurved college to all the participants and uh, nm agdum ayurved college thank you thank you sir thank you uh, for their enthusiastic and courageous words regarding the keynote address and the self experience also shared the so once again i will thank you uh, thank you mr sir uh, and now i hand over to my colleague uh, sachin sir for introduction of the today's our guest speaker chetra madam om danvantare namaha very good morning to one and all who have joined the webinar link first of all i like to thank our uh, beloved chairman sir who is a backbone of our uh, institute for uh, giving us a very great opportunity to uh, arrange such a seminar webinar uh, now without wasting the time i would like to give a brief introduction about uh, today's speaker that is uh, dr chaitra h madam good morning madam is it audible no madam currently working in uh, sdm hasan ayurveda sdm college of ayurveda in hasan madam completed her sslc from sourav then puc from kakarla then bms from alan rao ayurveda medical college koppa then md from vpsv ayurveda college kotekal then before taking the pg admission madam was worked as a lecturer in danvantari ayurveda college and hospital siddapura then after the completion madam has uh, joined sdm college of ayurveda hasan and uh, so far around uh, 11 or 12 years madam has achieved uh, very good milestone what we call uh, because madam has uh, presented so many papers like uh, publications and all uh, on a national seminar on agatantra that is nirvisha then a traditional wisdom in a snake bite ulcer then traditional teaser of snake bite management at nirvisha and uh, many more clinical studies which evaluate the efficacy of vishagnagana as well as vishagna lepa then apart from this madam also conducted as well as uh, attended around about 25 to 30 seminars so far then uh, apart from that madam also published uh, some of the books like uh, or small handbooks type like avabhasini then uh, association of dushi visha in kitiba kushta and so many like saga of traditional snake bite so considering all these publications as well as seminars from the madam who have decided and requested chaitra madam to please give a webinar on management of snake bite that to in ayurvedic aspect madam has accepted for this and we are really grateful to madam uh, thank you madam i will now hand over it to the madam to continue with the session thank you namaskaram i am audible yes ma'am yes. audible okay. uh, i thank uh, principal and organizing committee of uh, dr n a magadam ayurvedic medical college for uh, sharing my views on a traditional approach on uh, snake bite management dumstrom webinar i consider this webinar dumstrom webinar as a more relevant uh, in the present day because as per uh, ncism vishwa chikitsa opd uh, is mandatory under tantra department so we need to each and every college need to have vishwa chikitsa opd so we need to explore lot more regarding the practical approach to poisonous conditions so in this regard uh, i think this uh, dumstrom webinar will be more useful and hope this uh, webinar helps to explore uh, practical approach to jangama visha and its management <coughs> so as uh, 
Dr. Mahesh was uh, uh, rightly pointing out. We need to know our limitations and we need to know our strength also. So in this presentation, I'm going to disclose different uh, practices which has been practiced by our ancestors for many, many centuries. All this, uh, whatever I'm going to present now, it is the experience of uh, folklore practitioners who are being practiced this for more than 20 years. And have the experience of treating more than 500 cases. So in this, so this webinar will be more, it will be more of a practical approach uh, rather than uh, usual common uh, theoretical uh, uh, approach. So let me begin. Hope my screen is uh, visible. My screen is visible. No, I don't. My screen. Uh, madam, please. Hello. Please, sir. My screen is visible. Uh, visible, madam. Please, sir, madam. It please, sir. Request some technical issue within a second we solve it. Madam uh, Chatterman, welcoming. Uh, now you visible. Screen is visible. Ah, visible, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Continue, ma'am. So traditional approach to snake bite management. Uh, Madam slide show, please start slide, slide show. Pardon? Slide show is on the day. Continue, Madam. Okay. So these are the contents of my today's presentation. And uh, let's begin with the status of traditional practices of snake bed management at the global level. What WHO says? WHO says traditional first aid methods should be discouraged because they do more harm than good. So according to WHO, supposed to use any of the traditional method uh, in snake bite cases. What about uh, uh, our status in India? Ministry of and Family Welfare, Government of India says that discuss traditional first aid methods like a black stone, scarification, and alternative medical herbal therapy as they have no role and do more harm than good by delaying treatment. So, established in the year 1948, what was, see, snake bite cases were existing even before establishment of WHO and before invention of anti-snake venom, there were snake bite cases. What was the fate of all those victims who were bitten by snake? So, all those who were bitten by snake, were they died or were they survived? So, what was that? Uh, which made the snake bite patients, victims, to survive. So let's have a discussion on that. 
See, Agatha Tantra was considered as one among the eight branches, according to Acharyas of Ayurveda. In the BC, not in the AD, BC, before Christ only, it was considered one among the eight branches of Ayurveda. And it had an excellent glory in the past. And uh, we are in the 21st century, our own government deny our own capability. So where was the lacuna? If you look at the past, uh, when Alexander the Great invaded India, he had a lot of his uh, soldiers suffered from a lot of poisonous uh, snake bite uh, cases. And none of his uh, doctors could treat the snake bite cases. And finally, he invites the Vishavaityas from India to treat his uh, soldiers. So that was the glory, that was the capability of Vishavaityas of India. But now in 21st century, uh, we are uh, celebrating uh, Azadika Amrit Mahotsav, but where we are with respect to the status of Agada Tantra in the society. So even we look at the snake bite cases, according to WHO, it is the most neglected tropical disease. And in India, there are nearly 35,000 to 50,000 uh, snake bite cases per year, per year. And in Karnataka, it is considered one among the 13 states with the highest prevalence of uh, snake bite deaths. And when we look at the management according to WHO, we are supposed to use monospecific, monospecific anti-snake venom. And in India, we are having polyvalent anti-snake venom. And this has the challenges. There are many challenges with respect to the ASD or the anti-snake venom, which is available in India. First one is the species specificity. It's a difficulty in availability, affordability, and ideal storage condition. WHO itself accepts that 80% of the total population of the world depends on traditional medicines for their primary health care. So when we look at the ethnobotanical survey. There are plenty of research works on herbal antagonists of snake venom and maximum the study are uh, done by botanist. For snake bite management, hardly we get any scientific study or the documentation. So coming to the snakes, snakes are considered as the exothermic thermic limbless vertebras and I think uh, there is no necessity for me to explain this. Uh, so it belongs to reptilia class and uh, species nearly 330 species of snakes are available among them 70 or and snakes and uh, sea snakes and I think this uh, you all know the difference between poisonous and non-poisonous snakes depending on the features uh, depending on the physical features, tail, belly scales, teeth, etc., we differentiate whether it is a poisonous or a non-poisonous snake. And coming to the laboratory investigation, how to diagnose a snake bite case? So in this technological world, we are having so many lab investigations which has to be done treating a snake bite case. So you it is uh, nearly there are 10 investigations which has to be done and we also have to do go for anti-snake venom sensitivity before giving anti-snake venom. So usually it takes nearly half an hour to one hour to conduct all these uh, investigations and get a report and um, then to approach a snake bite case. So this is the pre present uh, situation what we are uh, facing in a, attending a snake bite case. So let's go back to the traditional practices. See how they used to diagnose a snake bite case. Of course, I don't say that this has to be practiced by us or this, uh, this is the only one way, but this also may help us in identifying a bite case, whether it is a non-poisonous or non-poisonous -po uh, or a non bite. So this is the feather test, which is practiced. And they say that uh, usually skin of the uh, snake bite victim, if they can feel the sensation of this feather, then the bite usually will be non-poisonous. If they cannot identify the sensation of this feather, then it is poisonous. 
So just within a few seconds, many of the practitioners, they diagnose whether it is a poisonous or non-poisonous condition. And here you can see many uh, sarpa money. They consider it as sarpa money. So these are every money it is having its own action. And this money, if it holds on the bite side, then they consider it as a poisonous bite. And if it doesn't hold on the bite side, then they consider it as a non-poisonous uh, condition. And here you can see Vishakalu also in the bottom uh, picture. There is a Vishakalu. Vishakalu is also called as poisonous stone. Even this stone also, it catches. If you keep, if you place this Vishakalu on the bite side, it catches the bite area. And it falls off once it has absorbed all the poison. So apart from this, you can see the green chilies here. It's uh, very interesting uh, to know that. See, the practitioners uh, use green chilies to identify the uh, bite, whether it is non-poisonous or poisonous. Usually, this, uh, they give this green chilies. And if a victim of snake bite can identify the taste of green chili, then the chances of the, uh, it may be a non-poisonous bite. And if he cannot identify the taste, then it is, it is definitely, it is a poisonous bite. And depending on the number of green chilies, which a victim can eat, depending on that, the, even they diagnose the severity of envenomation. That is, if a victim can eat more than 10, 15 green chilies at a time without identifying the taste, then they consider that envenomation is more. If if a patient cannot eat one or two, then the envenomation is very less. And one more important thing is this green chili test, they do only in case of cobra bite. But the same test, it, is, it cannot be practiced in case of viper bite because in viper bite, they cannot chew uh, this green chilies. So that is the way they differentiate between a cobra bite and a viper bite. And also the severity of envenomation also will be diagnosed depending on the number of green chilies eaten by the snake bite victim. And one more interesting uh, uh, thing is here you can see the Nagavalli Patra. So on this Nagavalli Patra, they have placed this Guduchi Chona. So this Nagavalli Patra along with Guruchi Churna will be given immediately after the bite. If the victim can identify the taste of Guruchi Churna, the bitter taste of Guruchi Churna, then the case is non-poisonous. If he cannot identify the taste of Guruchi Churna, then it is a poisonous bite. And this, uh, uh, this combination, they give every hourly once and they go on giving the medicine until the pay victim identifies the taste of Guruji. So this test they use to identify the bite, whether it is poisonous or non-poisonous, and also to diagnose whether the envenomation is completely neutralized or not. So these are the different methods, instant methods, which the traditional practitioners use to identify the, uh, to diagnose a snake bite. Next, coming to the first aid management. So, uh, yeah, this is Arishta Bandana, tying a ligature is uh, very commonly practiced. I do know that WHO doesn't recommend uh, uh, ligature. Of course, uh, there is a debate. So by tying a ligature, by tying the ligature too tight, then it may end up in gangrene, formation of gangrene. And if it is too loose, then it may, it may uh, help in circulation of the venom. But Arishta Bandhana has been explained in all the classical texts of Ayurveda. And even this is practiced since many, many centuries in the uh, villages, then if it was not useful, then why the people used to follow this since many, many centuries? So I have a video here. See, there is a specific way of tying the ligature and how there is a specific way to tie the ligature. There is a specific way to remove the ligature. And even we should know how long the ligature should be tied, when it should be tied and when it should not be tied. Tied. So there is a definite um, uh, scientific way to remove this ligature also. And traditionally, the, what traditional practitioners say is minimum we have to use 
two ligatures two ligatures should be tied one is just four angula above the bite side and one more is again a gap of four angula one more ligature has to be tied and while removing the ligature it should be tied only immediately within 10 minutes within five to 10 minutes it has to be tied and it has to be tied only to it's not that it should be tied whole day only uh, the time it should be tied until the victim is shifted to a safe place where the, he can be managed with the medicines for medicines only only to that duration it should be tied it should not be tied for us together and here you can see the uh, the way it should be in the removing ligature it is moving in the downward direction and when they are removing you can see that a certain treasure has been applied on this ligature and while removing this ligature they try to milk out the venom which has been injected in the bite side so there is a definite way to remove the ligature it is not just simply tying and simply removing the ligature so i think this video can uh, you can see you can see you can observe the movement of the ligature there the way he is removing the ligature So by removing the ligature, they try to milk out the venom which is injected. So uh, it should be tied only for half an hour or only not more than one hour. So by that time, only till the patient shifted to a safer place, it has to be tied. That's all. It is not for whole day. That should be uh, kept in mind. Next comes the general management. You see this uh, bite cases, it happens in the rural area. Usually it happens in the fields and many times they'll be alone or sometimes they may be accompanied with many other people. So immediately when there is a bite, what should be done? For that, traditionally, all these things are practiced since many, many centuries. See, Aristolokia Indica, I think this is a very common drug. Ishwari is a common drug, which is practiced almost in uh, many states, not only in many states, in many countries, it has been practiced. That is immediately after, uh, after the snake bite. If a victim uh, choose the root of Ishwari, uh, that is usually th they recommend 30 grams of uh, Ishwari Mula has to be chewed immediately after the bite. So by Chewing this, chewing is very important here and it is a fresh drug, fresh drug and it should be chewed and if it is chewed, they say that the symptoms will not aggravate once the victim consumes this Ishwari Mula. So other than this, you can see here Avartaki is one more drug and here the folklore practitioners say that uh, mongoose before fighting with the snake, usually it chews this plant. So the same thing has been practiced by the traditional practitioner and he is getting success. That is immediately after the bite, if a person chews this Avartaki uh, leaves, then the symptoms will be arrested at the same level. Apart from this, you can see Drona Pushpi, Lucas Aspera, which is grown as a weed in the field. And if again, if um, immediately after bite, if the victim chews this Drona Pushpi plant, then the symptoms can be arrested at the same level. So these are the different herbs, herbs which is uh, commonly available in the fields and especially in the rural areas uh, in India. And you can see this uh, tobacco leaves here. Uh, tobacco is considered as one among the Stavra Visha. And what this traditional practitioner do is they just mix the powder, one spoon of this tobacco powder with water and make the patient to drink this water. So by drinking this water, the patient will vomit within half an hour the patient will omit and once the patient has omitted then the symptoms will be arrested at the same level where it has appeared so visham vegas can be controlled this is the experience of the practitioner that visha vega can be controlled by drinking this tobacco leaves, powder of tobacco leaves along with water immediately after the bite. So these are the different very general management in spite of different species of snake bite. This is very commonly practiced in rural areas.
and these references we get even in samhitas and this has been scientifically proved even in uh, our research uh, there are many published research articles also saying that these are having uh, the property to neutralize the snake venom coming to the specific management so in ayurveda we consider mainly uh, sarpa is mainly classified into vata pitta the kapha that is darvikara uh, mandalina and rajiman when it comes to darvikara <coughs> uh, darvikara it increases darvikara sarpa increases vata where ushna chikitsa is the treatment there and here you can see in this uh, picture usually this sarpa mani is uh, very commonly used in case of cobra bite and here you can see one more uh, vishakallu and you can see the intestine it is the fresh intestine of the hen which is used to neutralize the snake venom and one more uh, bronze pot is kept so in case of cobra bite the traditional practitioners say that the symptoms aggravate very fast and it gives very less time for the pra practitioner to reduce the symptom so it should be managed very fast and once if it is managed fast again the symptoms will reduce also fast so in cobra bite the symptoms aggravate fast fast and also it reduces us also very fast so but only the thing is it gives very less time for the practitioner to give any medicines also so here you can see the sarpa mani and this sarpa mani was uh, obtained from the place where the cobra was burnt so it may be the solidified uh, snake venom itself and this venom this mani has to be kept on the bite site and if it Uh, if it is a poisonous condition then only this money holds in that bite site if it is non poisonous condition then it falls off and it holds to that uh, on the bite site only to that extent where it can absorb the venom and later it falls off by itself later this money should be kept in the milk and once you keep this one uh, this money in the milk usually this milk will turn into green color and if any animal drink that milk the that animal will die so this is a uh, common practice which is practiced in rural area and one more important thing is usually this sarpa mani is having action only in cobra bite not in other condition other bites and all it is not having any action and again coming to vishakallu yes there are published articles saying that vishakallu is not useful but this vishakallu uh it should undergo certain process only after undergoing certain process then only it has to be used and this vishakalu has action only on cobra bite not on any other species of snakes so again this is also same thing it has to be applied on the bite site and it sticks to the bite site and later it falls off once the poison is completely absorbed next comes the fresh uh, intestine of the hen this uh, we can see even in samitas also we get the reference that the fresh mamsa should be kept on the bite site or in upadana chikits also we get the reference that we need to keep the fresh mamsa so in case of cobra bite they keep this fresh uh, intestine of the hen on the bite site so usually it minutes this intestine turns to green in color then again they replace this intestine on the bite site and again until the intestine remains its own pinkish color till then they go on replacing this uh, intestine fresh intestine of the of the hen so these are the different measures which they use in case of cobra bite and uh, as we know the vikara sarpa uh, increases vata and ushna chikitsa is the treatment here you can see a very specific uh, you know very peculiar method where the three bronze spot will be kept on the head of the uh, snake bite victim and these three bronze spot will be filled with boiling water and they have to keep this these three bronze spot should be held by two to three people and they have to keep this bronze spot until the color of 
symptoms of the snake bite reduces. So this is one more very peculiar method uh, which is used in traditional practice. See here, I uh, about the Sarkamani, and here is a temple. This is a uh, Devi temple, and the Sarpamani, There is a, uh, the Sarpamani should be put on the snake bite victim only on the platform of this temple. It is not that the Sarpamani should not be applied anywhere or in the field or in the house of the pay victim. No, the victim should be brought to the platform of this temple and the victim should lie down on this platform and later the sarpamani has to be applied on the uh, bite site and this temple we don't know this temple is famous for the consecration of uh, it is having a special uh, it is consecrated with a special energy which can neutralize the uh, snake venom and whatever the sarpamani or the snake vishakalu whichever they apply they apply only on the platform of this temple so even this also matters so here is uh, these are the different folklore practitioners who are uh, giving life to those uh, victims of a snake bite and coming to this monday uh, immediately, if it is confirmed that the bite is of a viper bite, Mandali Sarpa, then this Eranda Twak, uh, the stem bark of the Eranda should be given along with buttermilk. Usually, this is 30 grams of fresh stem bark of Eranda along with uh, fresh buttermilk. It should be the patient should drink that buttermilk. Apart from this, this is one more very commonly uh, used drug that is uh, in Canada we call it as sardali in uh, villages, and it is uh, Andrographis serpilifolia. Even this fresh drug, thirty grams of this drug, if it is chewed immediately after the viper bite, then the symptoms can be controlled at that level itself. Next, coming to the carried bite, almost the management is similar to other bite cases, but with respect to the crate, uh, as we all know, the kapha increases after a crate bite. So here they practice this Agni Karma and Agni Karma usually they do with uh, broken black glass uh, bangles, uh, broken black uh, glass bangles are used to do agni karma they make it red hot and keep that glass bangle on different sides of the joints on each and every joint of the body and that is the way they practice agni karma and you can see the saliva here immediately they say that immediately after crate bite the best thing to do is apply the saliva on the bite site. So by applying the saliva on the bite site, the symptoms will not aggravate. So that is this reference we get even in our Samhitas also. Applying the Karnaguta on the bite site can prevent the aggravation of symptoms. So coming to the management of bite site, uh, usually they never use water or anything else, but they use this lemon juice to clear, to clean the bite site. And research says that citric acid is the best to neutralize the snake venom. So there is a specific way, there is a specific uh, movement uh, which they use to clean the bite area using this lemon juice. And after cleaning the area bite site with lemon juice, there's uh, a combination of the fresh kalko of maricha, kantakari, apamarga and lashuna will be applied on the bite site. So once by applying this kalka on the bite site, it prevents further necrosis or gangrene formation of the bite site. So this is very widely practiced. And I have personally witnessed many uh, snake bite victims getting cured after applying this kalka on the bite site. Even I have seen the severe gangrenous condition also responding very well for the fresh uh, application of fresh kalka of this combination. So coming to the discussion, whether this traditional practices is practiced only in India or in other parts of the world also. So we can see a lot of uh, 
documentation, lot of articles saying that uh, traditional practices are being practiced in Nigeria, Uganda, Burma, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and many more countries. And if you see the research article, MS Upasani has documented 523 drugs in India which act against the snake venom. It is only in Karnataka, only in Kerala, they practice this. Even it has been documented that in Chittur district of Andhra Pradesh, 31 drugs has proved for its uh, uh, anti-snake venom property. And Kargon district of uh, Madhya Pradesh also has documented 26 drugs which acts against the snake venom. And when we look at the traditional practices, which has been practiced for centuries and our own Samhitas, we can see the similarities. I, I could see a lot of similarities between what has been explained by our Acharyas and what has been practiced by the folklore practitioners. Main thing is Arishta Bandhana. So in our text, classical text, we get reference of two types of Arishta Bandhana, that is with mantra and without mantra. We have to tie the ligature and that is being practiced in the villages. Utkartana, that uh, we should make an incision on the bite side. Of course, there is an indication and contraindication for this Utkartana. And in folklore practitioner, they use the thorn just to do, just they make a small mic so that just to uh, remove the venom, just to remove the venom from the bite side, it will be a very minute uh, prick just to remove the uh, venom. And Agni Karma, as I told, uh, it is widely practiced in great bite. Anjana, yes, Anjana is widely practiced by the practitioners here. Usually, see, when a patient, uh, uh, the victim of snake bite, maybe because of fear or anxiety, sometimes he may go for In that tradition, they use this anjana. Anjana, um, they use the kalk of maricha kalka. Maricha kalka apply to both the eyes at a time to prevent the the patient. going unconscious because once if the patient becomes unconscious then it will be difficult to understand analyze the severity of the condition so usually this is widely practiced they apply this maricha kalka it will be applied to the eyes uh, to prevent the patient the victim going for unconscious and upadha is Chikitsa is widely practiced and uh, this Upadhana Chikitsa is just they make a scratch by using the tip of the paddy husk. Tip of the paddy, with the help of tip of the paddy husk, they make a scratch on the scalp and they keep this either this Sarpamani or this Vishakallu will be kept on the scalp or any medicine like there is a combination. They keep it on the scalp so that this prevents the further aggravation of the condition. Nishpedana, as explained in our Samhita, even they do apply little pressure on the bite side. And Svedana, as I explained, there are different varieties of Svedana. And in cases of viper bite, uh, to reduce the swelling of uh, viper bite, usually they do Svedana by using tamarind leaves. And even the Svedana has been explained in our Samhita. So also, Arkapatra Sveda is excellent in reducing the uh, pain uh, in bite cases. And I have practiced this Arkapatra Sveda in snake bite cases where the pain uh, due to bite reduces very fast. And patient, uh, you, uh, one of my patients, he used to request to do this Svedana many a times to reduce the pain. So Arkapatra Svedana is uh, uh, explained in our Samhitas and it is being practiced. And Rudaya Varna. So protecting the heart, many a drugs which has been used by the folklore practitioners or traditionally the practitioners which they use, they are having cardio protective activity, but they are not aware of it, but it is traditionally it is being practiced. And of course, there are some 
similarities also in ayurveda we say grita should be given in all bite cases but uh, traditional practices they say that grita should not be given and in ayurveda kulatta is strictly contraindicated in all visha condition but traditional practitioners they use kulattas of course there are we are having few dissimilarities also so in uh different drugs which has been proved for its uh, uh anti snake venom property allium cedis lashuna and palandu both has been proved its cardio protective activity against the cobra venom and root extract of uh, rovolfina serpentinea it neutralizes the lethality and hemolytic activity of rhesus venom ishwari is uh, found to be the aristoloc aristolochic acid found in aristolochia indica it increases the immune response and inhibits phospholipases of uh, snake venoms tamarindus indicus seed extract it neutralizes the lethal action if it is mixed with rhesus viper venom nearly 22 drugs are proved for their antidotal property so the drugs like uh, the which are used by the traditional practitioners for example it may be sarpagandha eshtimadu nimba manjista datura karanja ishwari nimbuka datuki ela maricha all the these are these drugs are explained as vishagna in ayurveda and the apamarga lashuna sarpagandha narikela nimba all these are considered as ridya in ayurveda and lashuna bala ashwagandha which they are practiced Increasing, they are having balya property also. Apart from this, these drugs which are practiced by them are having rasayana like ashwagandha, lashuna, eranda, istimadu, etc. These these are having uh, rasayana property also. So before uh, concluding, <clears throat> I request you all to understand the situation of a snake bite victim. see usually this snake bite happens in the rural area and many a times they'll be alone sometimes it happens in the midnight late night late evening uh, so in that condition in the rural areas of india we will not have any we cannot expect a uh, um, super specialty hospitals in the villages and from that village they have to come to a uh city nearly usually it will take around 1 hour or so and uh, of course at that time in the midnight they should arrange a vehicle and they have to come so it takes a lot of time and many and we don't know how much snake venom has been injected so in those cases uh to avoid the severity of the condition to prevent the uh further aggravation of Uh, visha vegas if this commonly drugs which are available in the villages if it is used just to avoid to prevent further aggravation of envenomation so don't you feel it will be a great contribution don't you feel it will reduce the mortality or morbidity of the snake bite victim of course I agree that all the traditional uh, these traditional practitioners they are illiterate they don't have the medical background they don't know the physiology they don't know the pathology they don't know what happens but these are well versed with the necessary skills which are required uh, to survive a snake bite patient i don't say that all are the best and uh, i'm not uh, supporting them i'm not telling that they are the best but they are having necessary skill which is required to survive a snake bite patient and these are these people they are successful in handling this uh, bite cases since many many centuries before asv also they have treated these cases and this uh, total presentation was just to boost the confidence level of the uh, students of ayurveda by validating the evidence based therapeutic approach to the snake bite patients by these uh, folklore practitioners see all these traditional practitioners were confident enough to manage the cases successfully in spite of lack of scientific knowledge of course i do agree that these practices needs a scientific systemic scientific analysis of all these practices to bring into mainstream and to reduce the mortality and morbidity <clears throat> 
So I acknowledge that uh, this total presentation was my experience of the survey done with the uh, traditional practitioners in the Hassan district of Karnataka. And the total survey was uh, funded by Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences, Bengaluru. And I acknowledge all those traditional practitioners of Hassan district uh, who disclosed uh, the medicines which or the practices which they practice in cases of snake bite condition. With this, these are the, my references. With this, I thank you one and all for your patience hearing. And these are the uh, traditional practitioners. Before ending up, I just want to uh, quote a reference from Charaka Samhita Sutrasthana first chapter, where Acharya says that, Aushadir Nama Rupa Bhyam Janate Hijapa Vane Avipaschaiva Gopascha Echa Anki Masinaha. That is, one, uh, if you are not uh, familiar with the drugs or if you don't know the drugs uh, name or the characters of the drug, then we can go, we have to approach uh, either covered with this, shepherds, uh, cowards, or those uh, people who live in the uh, forest so that they'll be knowing uh, drugs better than us. So here in this uh, presentation, this was the effort which I did, uh, meeting many of the traditional practitioners in and around Hassan district, uh, who are being practiced, these practices are being practiced since many centuries. All these are having experience for more than 20 years and have treated more than 500 uh, cases. So with this, uh, I thank one and all for your patience hearing. Thank you, madam. Uh, you have very broadly elaborated about the uh, importance of Agat Tantra, then the difference between uh, Cobra Bite and uh, Viper Bite, how, how to diagnose, then some more methods of diagnosis, uh, how to diagnose, then uh, importance of ligature also then general management, and then specific management. So they are all very nice, madam. Uh, there are some questions. Would you like to answer, madam? Yeah, definitely. There is all the words still relevant even today now. Pardon, sir. I'm not, I didn't hear I'm not getting... Whatever methods are so called, how, whatever you have to know, they are still useful or not, like that they are asking. So it may so be a Vishakallu, can... it may be a Vishakallu or it may be a Sarpamani and a Ligature and all, they are useful today's era, like that they are asking. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> This, uh, yeah, as I told, this Vishakalu and Sarpamani uh, has, yes, this is practice. That's what, the, what has happened is what I observed. When I did a survey, what I observed is the knowledge which has to transmit from generation to generation. Many things has been missed. So this Vishakalu, we cannot, as I explained earlier, this Vishakalu doesn't, uh, uh, no, it is not having any action in viper bite cases, nor this Sarpamani is having action on viper bite case. So this viper or this Sarpamani or this Vishakalu, it is species specific and only an expert can identify the species. And if I go, if I explain the Mandala, Mandalina Sarpa, they are having uh, minimum seven to eight varieties of mandala sarpa they explain and for every mandala sarpa they are having different uh, medicines but that medicines which was practiced in the previous is not completely transmitted to the next generation this is the biggest challenge what we are facing right now and whether these drugs are having action yes definitely they are having action and in spite of this, there are uh, many are complications are there. Yes, definitely, in spite of practicing this, complications are seen because it is not rightly practiced uh, as practiced by the, their previous generation. That is what I'm, uh, I am observing. Lack of proper knowledge 
uh, lack of proper exposure. Uh, because of the lack of proper exposure, we are ending up with many of the complications. Hope my answer is clear, sir. Yes, madam. One more question is there. Yeah. Uh, this question is from Dr. Silino. In the webinar, you have put a video regarding how to uh, tie the ligature. Yeah. Then the question here is how to remove the ligature. Yeah, no, that is that uh, video is to remove the ligature. Shall I show the ligature? Uh, shall I show the video again? It is removing the ligature. Uh, they have asked how to remove the ligature. Actually, uh, we have thought about this now. Okay, yes. I think, uh, shall I show the video again? It is removing the ligature. It Means is the, in which direction? In which direction they are asking? Okay, it should be so uh, towards the bite side. The ligature okay. should be moved. The movement of the ligature should be towards the bite okay. side while removing the ligature. So that it produces milking of the venom. Should I show the video again? One, uh, you have shown some temple for that ceremony. Yeah. Where it is located? Uh, it is uh, located in the Kaden Halli. Kaden Halli. Kaden Halli. Uh, Arsikere Taluk, Hassan District, Karnataka. Yes. Okay. Okay. And this temple is very famous in Hassan District. So immediately after the bite, uh, no. usually the patient will be taken to that particular temple. Okay. Thank you. Okay, madam. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your valuable time and a very nice webinar also. All the students have got very benefit from this webinar, I think. Now, next we'll move on to the second session that is uh, from Dr. Binodkar, sir. It is uh, on scorpion bite management. Now, I hand over this mic to Dr. Nitin Patil, sir, to continue the session. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sachin. Good morning to all. I hope uh, you are enjoying this academic phase arranged by Department of Agatandra. For second session, we are having uh, Dr. Sandeep Binogar, sir, which is uh, academician, researcher, and an Ayurvedic consultant with uh, more than 15 years he is working in the field of Ayurveda. Presently, sir is working as assistant professor in Department of uh, Agatantra and Vyavar Ayurveda at Government Ayurveda College, Jalgaon, Maharashtra. Sir is recipient of 11th national awards, uh, different through, throughout his career, including Kerala Ayurveda Research Award for his research work during post-graduation. Best Teacher National Award in 2022 by Ayurveda Teacher Association. He has published more than 43 research articles in peer-reviewed international journals. He has authorized eight books and presented in number of national and international conferences. He is one of the distinguished faculty on the editorial and reviewer board of various international journals of Ayurveda, Yoga, alternative medicines, forensic medicines, and toxicology from the country and abroad. Also, Sir is working as a member of examiner panel, MUHS Nashik University, University of Goa, Kerala University of Health Sciences, Parul University, Vadodara, Gujarat, 
and many more. We are blessed with such a eminent personality for today's second session, which is titled Traditional and Clinical Approach on Scorpion Sting. Now, may I request Dr. Sandeep Binurkar, sir, please continue with his session. Thank you, sir. Sandeep sir is not connected right now. Hello. Within a short period, uh, we connected with the Vinodkar sir. Some technical issues regarding some uh, internet connections. So I will request all the participants who will uh, request to stay tuned. Uh, and within a short while, within a two seconds, uh, we continue with uh, the second session of this uh, webinar with the management of uh, Sandeep Vinodkar sir. He will join us. This uh, live streaming is going on and uh, recorded in the on YouTube. So has then their queries can put their uh, put their uh, messages to their in, regarding the queries regarding doubts regarding the our departmental agatantra uh, in this uh, today's webinar. Uh, excuse me, sir. I think if you have requested to see the video of that uh, removing the ligature, shall I show in meal one? Ah, ah, madam. I requested to Chetra, madam, to just show the videos. Yeah. Continue, madam. Mm -hmm. Please observe the movement, it is downward direction. Thank you. Hope it's uh, clear. The movement is in uh, downward direction. Ah, thank you, madam. Thank Towards you. Okay, it's thank nice you. video, madam. Next collection. Regarding the traditional view regarding the snake bites, uh, some queries are again, uh, any doubts will be asked, and then we share to the, the participant to your WhatsApp number and they directly ask us the, what are the queries to the Chaitra madam. Thank you, thank you once again, madam. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity. Thank you, thank you, madam. Good, nice to place. Requested um, all the participants, more than 400 participants uh, joined the live this webinar, and also some viewers uh, regarding the 500 more in the YouTube. So, this uh, webinar is uh, going on the our uh, Dr. N.A. Mukdum Ayurvedic Medical College, Ankli, in the uh, Department of Agatandra. So, within a short while, with Sandeep Ganurakar, sir, we joined from the Jalagao, Maharashtra. So some technical issues and regarding the internet problem within the short period, he will join us. Uh, just I request to all the participants to stay tuned and uh, enjoy the webinar, today's webinar.
हेलो वेदर माय स्क्रीन इज विजिबल नाउ नॉट सर नॉट येट सर मेन मेन मार्क कर Ah, yes sir now it's visible is it visible sir no sir again it's hello. lost hello sir okay yes sir it is visible now sir okay okay just a minute let me uh, screen share yes sir yeah i hope it is visible now full screen yes yes sir okay uh, so uh, good morning one and all first of all i would like to thank uh, dr ramesh sir and the entire team of na magdu ayurveda college for inviting me as a speaker for this webinar and uh, as it was suggested that i should uh, take a class on this uh, uh, scorpion sting so here we are uh, going to discuss some uh, the integrative approach regarding the management of uh, scorpion sting is it visible now i hope the slides are changing yes it is visible sir yeah okay so uh, this will be the outline of our presentation we will have some introductory part about the scorpion sting and uh, the Uh, insect scorpion itself then we will have the zoological classification of uh, the scorpions then the epidemiology of scorpion stings uh, then we will also go uh, shortly through the uh, anatomy of the scorpions then uh, what are the common scorpions species which are available in india then uh, of course we will have some view on the ayurvedic point of view regarding the uh, scorpion and its uh, management uh, uh, then uh, the 
for pain venom symptomatology according to the modern medicine uh, how and how it, uh, it's going to act on the uh, then what may be the lab studies and the investigations that we can conduct then uh, the management uh, the management will include the conventional management that is the modern medicine and as well as the ayurvedic uh, medicines that can be used we will also go through some research papers which were um, which are already published uh, on the management part of this partnership including the modern and ayurvedic part then uh, the uh, prevention uh, for these partnership things and the conclusion we will also have some color plates of the uh, partnership patients Uh, so uh, regarding the introductory part we can say that uh, the human beings are having uh, a kind of inevitable relationship with all the insects we are sharing this uh, mother earth equally with all the animals and insects uh, that are uh, residing on this and uh, of course uh, each and every insect uh, they are having uh, their importance uh, for maintaining the equilibrium of this uh, ecology Uh, scorpion stings are one of the most devastating and endemic public health problem in almost uh, each and every part of this uh, world. There are very uh, few parts which are spared uh, from the scorpions, and uh, cases are very less there. Uh, the scorpions are the oldest known terrestrial arthropods, uh, dating back from four thirty million years. And it is believed that uh, they were originated from the ocean. and they were initially having some gills and claws like appendages just like fish and uh, so that they can climb the rocks and shores and uh, later on they evolved to appear in the uh, current stage that we use you now uh, so the scorpions have found in many fossil records including the uh, coal deposits uh, scorpions are eight uh, leg venomous uh, invertebrates Uh, belonging to the uh, arachnida class uh, it is uh, related to like spiders mites ticks etc uh, it is having a long slender body with a five segmented tail that can be arched over the back uh, we know that uh, what scorpions actually look like the tail end of the uh, scorpion which is having its uh, poisonous glands are also called as tension or a stinger so these are the uh, the How the scorpions actually look like? Uh, this is one kind of uh, the scorpion. The black emperor scorpion is known as the biggest scorpion of all. It weighs uh, about as much as a uh, hard-boiled egg and is about eight inches long. The longest uh, recorded scorpion in the world was eight point five inches in length. So this is regarding the classification, zoological classification of scorpions. Uh, the Kingdom of the scorpions is Animalia. Phylum is Orthopoda. Subphylum is Chilcrata. Class is Arachnida. The order is Scorp. So usually, when we have to classify the scorpions, this will be the order for the classification. The total number of scorpions are more than one thousand four hundred species, which are known. Okay. The number of species are around fifty, and uh, the Phylum of the scorpions is Phylum Orthopoda, and uh, it is again divided into seven families. So these are the seven families of the scorpions, uh, in which the scorpions are divided. But uh, what uh, we usually face in this part is the uh, Buthidae family, which is having also on these uh, scorpions. Those are having some uh, venomous species as well. So uh, regarding the distribution uh, of the scorpions, when we uh, see that uh, the uh, species like Androctonus and uh, Mesobutus, these are the uh, main two species which are uh, usually uh, encountered in uh, our country, that is India. And there are some other species also, that is Butus, Shortentota, and various etc. Those are also available in the other part of. It. so this was the data which was published in 2012 uh, even though it is the old data but it, even this is still the uh, number of cases are still the same uh, around the world there are about 1.5 million uh, cases of animal mutilation and around 2600 uh, deaths uh, were recorded in that uh, study and uh, when we come to the uh, india Uh, we can say that uh, the most uh, venomous species of the scorpion are 
uh, found in uh, these particular states, uh, which includes the uh, Maharashtra, where Raigad and Ratnagiri districts are having uh, the most popular Indian red scorpions. Then in Karnataka, Bellari is the region where scorpions are more. Now, in Andhra Pradesh, Tirupati area is there. Then in Tamil Nadu also, this uh, Chennai and uh, Pondicherry are the areas where uh, scorpions in cases are very common. Pradesh, Varanasi, and in Gujarat, Saurashtra part is there where the cases are very uh, frequently occurred. And now coming to the anatomy of the scorpions, this is the typical uh, body structure of the scorpion where we uh, when we uh, go through the anatomy of the scorpion, these are having four legged uh, orthopoda, where the uh, most important part is the uh, tail, and that is the tail part of the uh, scorpion, where the uh, venom glands are uh, located. And uh, it is also known as finger, where uh, when by this particular part, the scorpion is going to. Uh, the mouth part is uh, having a claw like structure. And uh, these are called as pedipals, which is usually used, um, uh, used to uh, hold the prey. Uh, this is again the some uh, anatomical details of the uh, scorpions. Uh, uh, there is no need to go for this details. The important part is that uh, the scorpions range from the size half inches to the seven and a half inches size, which um, there are uh, very tiny scorpions also and very large scorpions also. And again, the size of the scorpions usually doesn't matter when it comes to the uh, potency. The scorpions having a typical uh, property that is uh, fluorescence property and they used to uh, shine in ultraviolet light in the, in the night. So uh, uh, it's usually helpful to uh, find out or search the scorpions in the night period also. Uh, the scorpions are uh, mostly active in the night period as compared to the daylight. So this is the part uh, which is called as tailson and which is having the first glands. The most dangerous scorpions live in North Africa, Middle East, South America, Mexico, and uh, of course in India, where the uh, black scorpion and red scorpions are very common. So these are the two most most species which are found in India, that is uh, Indian red scorpion, that is Mesolithus stamulus, and uh, Indian black scorpion, that is Hippolytus comradine. Uh, these are the foods of uh, the scorpions. So, yes, when uh, these are available near, near about us, then definitely there are chances that scorpions may also be present. All these scorpions are viviparous, it means that they give live birth just like humans. and uh, the mother scorpion, it can give about 35 to 100 uh, scorplings, uh, which are around uh, one and a half, uh, half to one and a half inches in length. So what Ayurveda says? Uh, according to Ayurveda, the Vishika are included in Jangam Vishka. Eat uh, Vishka uh, is the part where uh, actual Vishika are explained. And uh, when it comes to the origin or uh, the types also uh, they have explained that the uh, scorpions are usually uh, originated from the dead bodies of the animals uh, they are also originated from the dead bodies of the uh, animals which were beaten by the venomous snakes and uh, the dead bodies of the venomous snakes itself also so uh, actually uh, when we go behind the rationality of this uh, it is the possibility that uh, the uh, species of uh, particular scorpions, they will, they might have sharing um, such habitats usually, and that's why they have classified it according to the uh, origin. Uh, now coming to the types of these scorpions, uh, it has been mentioned that uh, uh, there are three major types: that is, Madhavisha, Madhavisha, and Mahavisha. Madhavisha scorpions are twelve in number, and they are having Bahu Parva and Shweta Udva usually. This may be the anatomical uh, findings or observations they might have made during their uh, studies. Then Madhavisha, they are three, which are, which are having Tiparva and Dhunuvar. And Mahavisha are uh, 15 in numbers, uh, which are uh, one or two Parva, or sometimes they may not have any 
per wall segment and uh, they may be uh, there they may be available in various uh, various colors so these are the uh, types of this scorpions uh, excuse me sir hello excuse me sir ha uh, ha uh, uh, some delegates are uh, not getting your voice properly sir they are, they are saying that uh, your voice is weak maybe you can speak louder little louder okay okay yeah there may be some network issue again i think yes yes sir i am yes. extremely sorry i am extremely sorry yeah no 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 problem yes. just uh, raise your voice also no problem sir okay okay sir. Okay, okay okay is it audible properly now yeah yeah okay. for us Thank it you. is completely fine for some delegates it is some difficulty i think so okay 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 yes thank you sir. please continue yes, yes. now uh, uh, according to the uh, some uh, um, kerala classics also they are, they have classified these uh, scorpions according to the uh, dosha and uh, in kerala comedy it has been mentioned that there are around 18 vataj scorpions then 24 pitta scorpions 13 kafar scorpions and uh, 12 scorpions which are having sunny path uh, type of uh, the presentation then uh, coming to the manifestation of the scorpion sting uh, the uh, signs and symptoms and the severity it depends on several factors uh, especially the species of the scorpions of course we know that there are certain uh, species which are more uh, venomous as compared to the others so the species is uh, one of the main factors uh, which will have the effect on the uh, uh, manifestations then uh, the age size and nutritional status of the scorpion also matters because definitely the uh, property of the venom will vary according to these uh, uh, conditions then the condition of the tail sir tail sir or also it is known as the stinger apparatus so uh, it also uh, matters because if it is already damaged or it is having some kind of uh, blockage definitely there may not be the quantity of the venom which can be injected then the number of uh, stings and the quantity of the venom which is injected this is also one of the important factor depth of the sting penetration because again it depends on the uh, um, uh, quality of that uh, tension then uh, composition of the venom as we know that uh, there are number of species and the potency of the venom also varies so definitely the uh, composition of the venom varies according to the species uh, then the health and age of the victim is again one more factor uh, which is uh, uh, there in the uh, uh, humans because if the age is less or the victim is weak then definitely the chances are there that the uh, envenomation or the signs and symptoms will be uh, kind of severe uh, then uh, weight of the victim and uh, uh, the presence of the comorbidities for example if there is uh, the person is already suffering from uh, hypertension or uh, diabetes uh, then definitely there are chances that the uh, severity will be more now coming to the content of the venom there are several contents and uh, these are the known contents but definitely there are some other contents which were still uh, not known uh the known contents so far are the neurotoxins cardiotoxins nephrotoxins hemotoxins uh, there are several uh, contents in the uh, venom which are having uh, its own effect on the human body and uh, uh, they will uh, be more uh, severe effects on uh, some vital organs also now coming to the uh, ld50 studies which are uh, Uh, conducted on uh, certain species so these are the data which uh, uh, shows that the lethal 50 dose uh, of uh, various scorpion venoms and uh, when we uh, go through the indian species that is mesobutus stamulus indian red scorpion the ld 50 dose is 0.5 to uh, 0.0 uh, uh, 0.4 to 0 uh, 2.5 mg per kg body weight uh, so this is the uh, ld 50 and most of the uh, lethal scorpions they have their ld50 dose below 1.5 mg per kg body weight so uh, we can imagine that around the 50 mg of uh, uh, scorpion venom is enough to kill any uh, healthy human which is having his uh, weight around 50 kg Uh, the venom which is injected in a single sting it uh, varies from 0.1 to 0.6 mg 
uh, in a single dose and the potency of the venom varies with the species which i have uh, already uh, uh, mentioned uh, this is one more interesting factor regarding the scorpions that they do not miss a drink water they uh, get their uh, required water from the food itself whatever the food they uh, just you actually they do not chew they just suck the uh, liquid part from the uh, prey and uh, what is uh, but whatever the uh, acidic uh, secretions uh, are there in the mouth part of the scorpion they are going to liquefy the flesh of that prey and uh, it will be converted into the liquid and then they can suck it so this is the mechanism of uh, testing the food in case of this now coming to the pathophysiology of the scorpion sting when there is a scorpion sting uh, there are several uh, features or the symptoms which uh, usually produce and that's why it is known as the scorpion sting syndrome because uh, the venom it is having numerous contents and each and every content is going to have certain effect on the human body so uh, depending on that particular content which is uh, more uh, potent the symptoms may vary so usually there may be uh, initial uh, beginning with the local pain then uh, there may be uh, some other kinds of symptoms like uh, vomiting sweating salivation usually this is called as sludge syndrome uh, then there may be priapism also that is painful erection of the penis uh, this is usually seen in case of uh, uh, young patients or children uh, then uh, there may be some uh, other symptoms like hypotension then there may be uh, some um, uh, respiratory symptoms including the pulmonary edema tachycardia uh including the shock also so these are the symptoms and in some cases it has been also observed that the scorp uh, the scorpions they are having some effect on the cardiac tissues also so there may be a myocardial injury so these are the uh, major symptoms which are usually uh, seen in case of uh, the scorpion sting the specific signals of common uh, stings it depends on the type and location of the bite sting the amount of the poison which is injected to the time elapsed since the poisoning and the uh, size of the victim that factors which uh, we have already uh, seen uh, less severe reactions in the sting they may uh, have the following signs uh, a usually a bite or a sting mark only it may be a just a single puncture mark at the site of the sting uh, then there may be a redness there may be swelling then pain and tenderness are the usual uh, features which are Uh, uh observe the severe reactions sometimes it may results in the anaphylactic shocks the local signs that is neurotoxic local signs it includes local pain burning sensation pruritus erythema swelling and ascending hyper uh, anesthesia that is uh, the uh, increased sensation then uh, the uh, cytotoxic local signs it may include the papule or macule formation there may be a perpetual plague uh later on after a few days it may turn into a ulceration and uh, there may be a necrosis of the uh, local tissues uh usually after 4 to 5 days such signs are uh, seen uh, then in case of systemic signs uh, neurological signs may also show the uh, cerebral uh, thrombosis and uh, the strokes uh, paralysis of the limbs then altered consciousness restlessness confusion delirium etc and ataxia so these are the some uh, Uh, cerebral signs then uh, in sympathetic signs if there may be a tachycardia hypertension uh, hyperkinetic uh, then pulmonary edema seizure etc and arrhythmia uh, these are the signs which are usually uh, seen in case of uh, sympathetic uh, involvement in case of parasympathetic involvement as we have already uh, said that uh, there may be uh, sludge syndrome that is salivation lacrimation urination defecation etc so these are uh, visible uh in somatic signs there may be a rigid spastic muscles of the limbs involuntary muscle spasms twitching pulses etc and in cranial nerve signs there may be a classic rotatory eye movement that is ptosis which is uh, usually uh, seen uh, in case of snake bites also uh, cobra bite but uh, if the um, uh, 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 the species which is usually Uh, indian red scorpion so in uh, indian red scorpions also such uh, uh, two cs and nystagmus uh, including the blurred vision is uh, seen uh, mydriasis then trunk fasciculation uh, dysphagia dysarthria etc these are also seen in some cases 
in case of cardiovascular science there may be hypertension tachycardia uh, then cardiovascular collapse second is the profuse loss of sweating vomiting diarrhea uh, this is also visible then in case of respiratory science there may be pulmonary edema paralysis uh, then alveolar hypoventilation and bronchorrhea these are the signs in case of respiratory involvement the uh, gastrointestinal signs it includes the excessive salivation dyspepsia nausea there may be uh, allergic signs like urticaria and edema bronchospasms anaphylaxis etc uh, the genetic urinary signs it may include the decreased renal plasma flow uh, acute uh, necrosis rhabdomyolysis that is excretion of the proteins and excretion of the protein part through the urine and uh, this may uh, lead to the renal failure Uh, there may be preeclampsia secondary to the cholinergic stimulation hematological signs it may include the platelet aggregation disseminated intravascular coagulation that is also called as uh, dic and uh, the hemorrhage uh, metabolic signs it may include the hyperglycemia lactic acidosis dehydration from the hypersalivation vomiting and uh, uterine contractions we also seen in case of this coagulation so uh, Uh, uh this is the flow chart uh, by which we can usually uh, uh classify the type of the uh, scorpion sting uh, in case of uh, non venomous uh, uh, scorpion sting there is usually extreme local pain uh, it is usually said that if the pain is more severe the type may be uh, more venomous but usually uh, it is not observed so and uh, it is uh, well mr already mentioned in the uh, uh, legendary uh, uh, dr lawa uh, bawaskar sir where uh, he has mentioned that if the uh, pain in case of scorpion sting is more the prognosis is better because uh, there are chances that if uh, there is a severe pain the species of the scorpion that stung is uh, non venomous uh in case of highly venomous snake they uh, sorry uh, scorpions uh there may be mild to uh, moderate pain or sometimes there may be no pain uh, there may be paresthesia vomiting salivation sweating diapism etc so whatever the uh, systemic signs which we have seen it is usually seen uh, in case of uh, highly venomous uh, scorpions and uh, uh, the local pain is very less and uh, invariably fatal in case of uh, mild to moderate pain in case of uh, scorpions and uh, uh, these are the uh, uh, usual uh, signs and symptoms that can be seen uh, if we have to grade the uh, scorpion sting symptomatology uh, it can be uh, graded in four uh, classes that is uh, grade 1 local effects only grade 2 uh, systemic autonomic effects grade 3 cardiotoxicity and pulmonary edema and grade 4 is the progressive cardiogenic shock and multi system organ failure now ayurvedic symptomatology uh, it is well known that uh, the uh, poison of the scorpion it is going to have a severe local pain and uh, it radiates towards the heart so it has been mentioned in ashtanga hrudaya also that is the vrishika stivishan tikshnam adodhati vanyavar sutam arohati sutam danshe pashtakti tishtadi so uh, this is uh, the study which was conducted uh, for the distribution of the scorpion venom and uh, it has been conducted with the help of uh, technetium uh, 99 that is the radioactive substance which was amalgamated with the scorpion venom and when it was injected into the animals it was seen that within the 5 uh, minutes of the administration uh this uh, labeled venom that is labeled with the technician 99 it was found in the blood muscles and bones also so you can see that uh, within the 5 minutes this venom can reach up to the bone so this was the study which was conducted uh, by some um, researchers uh, and uh, it has been also mentioned that the uh, effect of this particular uh, Uh, scorpion venom it depends on the species as well as the age of that particular uh, scorpion so this was the second study which was conducted uh, indicating the uh, findings 
then uh, regarding the uh, symptomatology again we can see that the, uh, the symptoms which are mentioned uh, for the mandu vishvarushika are different and mandu vishvarushika are also different in mandu vishvarushika it has been mentioned that there may be a putu gatha sambhav rakta on the uh, various uh, orifices then there may be uh, dah sved and uh, then shesho for individual and in case of madhya vishvarushika there may be jiva shok bhojana stavro that is dysphagia which is also mentioned by the modern physician then the murcha uh, and uh, this is usually seen in madhya and ugra uh, vishvarushika in tikshna uh, vishvarushika also it has been mentioned that there may be shunar nastapta gatra hajjara um, then khair bamram shonitam kushnam indriya artham savidnam there is again blackish blood uh, discharge from the uh, the uh, bleeding from the orifices and uh, uh, other signs which have been mentioned in the uh, madhya and uh, manda vishaya uh, there are certain uh, other signs which are mentioned in classics of uh, uh, Malayalam classics that is Prayog Samuchya and Kriya Komodi and it has been mentioned depending on the uh, entry of this particular Vrushchika uh, Visha into various Dhatus that is Sapta Dhatus so depending on the, uh, 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 the reach of that particular Venom to that particular Dhatu there are uh, the set of the uh, uh, Lakshanas which appear and it has been mentioned in the uh, this particular table it is uh, Uh, similar, uh, just like that of the uh, snake bite, where we have uh, classified uh, the symptoms according to the Arthrogatha of the particular snake venom. Uh, the patient's point of view, uh, usually it is uh, the unbearable pain at the site and it is also radiating. There may be burning sensation, sensation, inflammation, and sometimes if it is a uh, uh, thing of a few days uh, back, then there may be necrosis. So definitely, it is the urgency of the situation, and uh, when uh, there is acute case, that is when the patient is uh, approaching to the physician, definitely there are uh, the initial signs that is the severe pain, and uh, unfortunately, we do not have any scale to measure that particular pain, and we have to depend on the uh, words of patients and uh, the visual uh, analog score. That is the better option to. Uh, assess the pain of the patient and depending on that we have to treat it uh, coming to the lab studies and investigations we can see that uh, uh, we have to go for the uh, count for the leuco uh, leukocytes because usually it is raised there may be some uh, hemolysis also then we have to uh, evaluate the electrolytes because uh, because the uh, uh, vomiting salivation lactation there may be some electrolyte imbalance then uh, coagulation parameters also because uh, at the high concentrations the uh, scorpion venom it, it usually acts as anticoagulants then we have to go for the creatinine kinase and urine analysis also because uh, there may be a case of uh, rhabdomyolysis that is disintegration of the proteins and it may lead to the uh, muscular uh, injuries including the kidneys and cardiac tissues then we have to go for the check Uh, chest x-ray also because in some cases there may be pulmonary edema uh, then there may be echocardiography uh, there may be some other uh, tests also that can be conducted in uh, case of uh, the scar testing in uh, conventional medicines usually uh, they prefer the analgesia that is non steroidal anti inflammatory uh, including some local anesthetic that is called valoke uh, it should be adrenaline free uh, this is usually preferred in case of uh, For the local uh, pain, and uh, it can be uh, elevated with this uh, morphine. Usually avoided because sometimes it may uh, cause uh, dysarrhythmias. Uh, Anti serum. This is again uh, useful, and the study published in 2006 shows that uh, it is uh, more useful in, in cases if uh, we are going to use the specific uh, anti-scorpion venom. Uh, these are the uh, uh, Some species of the scorpions, and uh, against that particular species, uh, we are having the uh, antivenom which is available. So in India, we are having the antivenom available for the stimulants. So this is the particular uh, scorpion venom. Then prazosin is one more medicine which is 
usually preferred and uh, which was indicated for the first time by uh, Bavaskar sir. And uh, actually this medicine is for the hypertension, but uh, it is having very good effect in the uh, Parkinson's cases also where there is uh, development of the pulmonary edema. Uh, uh, this is actually a competitive post-synaptic alpha-1 receptor antagonist. Uh, it blunts the uh, sympathetic storm and activates the venom inhibited calcium dependent protection channels. Uh, peak concentration is between one to three hours and plasma half life is about two to three hours. Clinically, it starts acting in one hour and maximum action occurs at the end of the three hours. It is easy to administer even in a rural setting. The usual dose of this particular uh, bragosine is one milligram stat when the patient uh, reaches uh, one milligram. Uh, stat is given and later on uh, 0.25 milligram uh, should be repeated after every two to three hours. Uh, it is available in the form of uh, tablets. So this is the uh, uh, effect of the pricing on various uh, parameters. Uh, it has been in, uh, shown in this chart. And as compared to the uh, other medicines, including the anti uh, Scorpion venom. This particular medicine, that is prazosine, is very uh, cheap and uh, it is uh, uh, usually um, suggested in uh, the rural setup because uh, procuring the anti scorpion venom uh, is very difficult, even in the uh, places also. So, the prazosine uh, or uh, Many places, these are the names of this particular medicine. It is very uh, easily available and it can be given uh, at the rural setup. And uh, this particular study, which was conducted by again uh, in Matra Bauskar, shows that uh, the, the efficacy of the scorpion antivenom uh, uh, when given with uh, prazosin uh, and uh, the, when given prazosin alone, the, the, the difference that is the significant is not uh, very much different. but uh, it is suggested that the early administration of uh, antivenom within six hours of the sting, in addition to the prazosine, has uh, uh, hastened the recovery. That is, uh, the recovery was very uh, faster. Uh, but uh, they have also mentioned that uh, the patient treated for the scorpion sting with uh, scorpion antivenom and uh, prazosine. Um, uh, incidences of the import, uh, this uh, this improvement of the improvement and uh, deterioration were similar in those uh, both cases, but uh, uh, the uh, group where the uh, anti scorpion venom and the prazosine was given, uh, the recovery was a uh, little bit faster. Uh, 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 another treatment which is usually suggested in this case is the glucose insulin potassium regimen. The dose of glucose is 0.5 gram per kg uh, per hour and uh, insulin is administered at the dose of 0.3 units of uh, the glucose. It can be prepared by adding 15 units of plain insulin to uh, 500 ml of 10% uh, glucose solution and infusion uh, uh, and infusing it at the rate of 5 ml per kg uh, per hour. The adequate potassium is uh, to be added by monitoring the serum potassium level because in this case there may be chances that the uh, serum protection level is also uh, decreased. Uh, then other associated uh, treatment in case of scorpion includes the uh, correction of the body fluid uh, because there are chances that there may be some uh, dehydration in case of scorpion uh, Correct acid-based uh, abnormalities uh, should be uh, uh, maintained. Then antihistamines then adrenaline and corticosteroids, oxygen and respiratory support, as indicated, if uh, it is a case of uh, a pulmonary edema, uh, there is maybe a reduced saturation. Then diuretics can also be used uh, cautiously because it may again uh, help in reducing the uh, pulmonary as well as sometimes uh, there may be a uh, encephalopathy in case of Parkinson. So that can uh, this particular diuretic. That can help in reducing the and uh, dopamine or dobutamine uh, can also be used. Depending on the stages of this person sting and renovation, uh, these medicines are usually suggested. Again, this is the suggestion by 
Dr. Bhaskar sir, and uh, this uh, particular uh, study was conducted uh, uh, on uh, uh, around 250 patients, and uh, he has uh, drafted this particular um, treatment protocol for the skull testing. So the first step, it may include immobilization, including injection and the wound care if uh, it is having some open supportive care. It may include the administration of uh, NSAIDs and antibiotics. Then hyperdensive therapy, it again includes the privacy. Uh, pulmonary edema, it can be treated with uh, prosemide and uh, sparkling venom antiserum. Again, uh, if it is given along with the privacy, it will have very fast recovery. Uh, the contraindications uh, usually for the uh, 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 antispartan venom, or uh, there may be some cautions which can be taken uh, while administering this particular antispartan. Is that uh, along with that, we should uh, cautiously use the atropine, morphine, steroids, ACE inhibitors, and calcium channel blockers because there may be chances of drug interactions and patient to have some other uh, adverse effects also. So, uh, coming to the Ayurvedic treatment, uh, this uh, treatment which, was, which is suggested in Ayurveda is uh, particularly classified into uh, two types, that is Yukti Vapasra and Daiva Vapasra. In case of Yukti Vapasra, Shodhana and Shamana treatment is given. Uh, in the Manda Vrishika Chikitsa, there may be uh, a Parishay which is uh, given with the help of Sail Gudariga and Jonas Sail. Then the Gurkha and is also Upanaha that can also be used uh, with the help of the Shantari, Shantari, the same Gurkha, the Gurkha, the Gurkha, the Swedana, which is the Shantari and Kalkasana, the Deva, the Dhuma, and the Agada, like the Paravata, the Shakutagad, or even the Virvadiyagad or the Shangagad or the Shantariyagad that can also be used in case of. In uh, Madhya or Tikshna Visha uh, Kisa, uh, Swedana uh, with uh, Sukhoshna Gomera Pratisarana with the help of Karidra, Sendra Vidu, Shik, etc. Then Lepa with Tulsi Patra, Matlunga Saras, etc. And Pana, uh, we can use Shaudra, Kukshira, Bhushara, Pray, Kukshira, etc. So these are again a uh, few uh, other yogas uh, which are mentioned in Samhitas. Uh, that is Chakrutail or Gudari Gandhus Tail, then Vachahim Gurantani, that is uh, the Shangagada, which is very uh, commonly used uh, in Kerala for uh, scorpion skins. And there are few uh, articles which are published on the efficacy of this particular Agada. Then Vilvadi uh, Agada, it is also useful. So these are few uh, research papers which are published on this uh, Agada, that is the Shangagada and the Vilvadi Agada. Uh, some comparative studies are also conducted, and it has been found that uh, 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 the alone single use of this Bilwaji Agada uh, or the Shang Agada is, uh, 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 even though it is uh, statistically significant, but the uh, individual effect of the Shang Agada is more as compared to the Bilwaji Agada. And of course, when we use it along, I mean, uh, together, the effects are better. Dushveshari uh, Agada is also one of the uh, can be used in uh, for testing and uh, one more uh, medicine that is Vishwilvadi Gutika uh, that is uh, having additional contents of uh, uh, Nilini, Ishwari, and Pata. It is also having some uh, good effects in the uh, for testing. Uh, these are some other ref uh, references or the researches which are conducted in uh, for testing. Uh, it uh, includes the uh, Shunti Tagara Lepa and uh, the Shanga Gulika. It was again the Study, uh, which was conducted at Papish Kiri. Uh, in this study, also it is found that the Lepa, the Shintitagara Lepa, and uh, the Shangadara have been good, good results on the uh, uh, A single case study was published, uh, and uh, in that uh, particular study, Arkapatra Bhutadhara was uh, conducted uh, along with the, uh, the Shangadara. And in this case, also uh, results were uh, obtained and it was really satisfactory. Uh, some review articles are also published, and uh, uh, there are several herbs which are having uh, its uh, effect on the the on the uh, uh, scorpion venom. And uh, these herbs can be used as uh, used as um, anti uh, scorpion treatment for the um, 
patients. Uh, the treatment modality that can be used for uh, relieving the pain uh, in case of uh, spot testing is the group send of Dara. Uh, uh, of course, any kind of Dara which is having its uh, Sukhoshna uh, property and uh, along with some uh, medicines, uh, in, uh, it including uh, this particular uh, Sendava or uh, uh, as is mentioned earlier, that is the Arkapatra. These are having some uh, very good effect on the uh, pain and uh, it has been seen that around 40 to 50 percent pain can be relieved within 15 to 20 minutes after uh, starting this particular dhara. So we can continue this particular dhara for about 45 to 45 minutes to one hour and uh, definitely the uh, unbearable pain can be converted into a bearable pain. Uh, and this is the uh, common uh, uh, treatment or we can say the general line of treatment in case of uh, uh, the spot testing it says that the SSA with Osha filling are the computer case. Whatever the signs and symptoms are visible in case of uh, the patients, uh, for uh, depending on those particular uh, signs and symptoms and uh, predominance of Osha, we have to use uh, these medicines and uh, the uh, uh, processes which are mentioned in poison. Including the uh, so the goal of the therapy it should be uh, it should be to decrease the severity of the pain, then to induce the sense of feeling better. Then it should be uh, considered in mind that the, there should be increased activity and uh, the patient should be able to work. Then uh, uh, there should be decreased healthcare utilization because uh, if the are uh, easily available definitely we can go for uh, we can go for it and uh, we can reduce the uh, expense of the particular, that particular patient then a reduction in the medication is this uh, there may be some complications in case of uh, uh, for cases that is uh, there may be dilated cardiomyopathy then I'm, I'm closing of small joints and suffer at the time. Then there may be rhabdomyosis. So all these uh, complications uh, that uh, we should look for and uh, we should avoid it so that uh, the patient should not suffer uh, from it. And uh, definitely, as uh, said by the uh, Dr. Uh, that if uh, we think that the patient is not manageable at our level, we should uh, promptly uh, refer it to the higher center so that uh, the life of the patient and uh, definitely the uh, complications they should not arrive and uh, appear and the uh, patient can be saved uh, within time. So these complications we should keep in mind and uh, if we are observing it means uh, definitely we should not try uh, at our uh, setup and uh, it, it is always better to uh, refer, refer it to the higher center. Uh, prognosis of the scorp testing patient depends on several factors, as it is already mentioned, that is ASPC, venom, and etc. etc. Symptoms generally persist for 10 to 48 hours. If the victim survives the first few hours without severe symptoms, uh, the prognosis is really good. First prognosis can be ex expected uh, with the presence of uh, systemic symptoms, such as cardiovascular symptoms or seizures or coma, etc. Uh, mortality rate is usually about 4% with the children and elderly being, and uh, uh, it is less in case of adults. Uh, death by scorpion, if it occurs, it is uh, the result of heart or respiratory failure. These are the usual uh, causes in case of uh, scorpion sting and venomation. And now how to prevent? Uh, we have to remove the piles and rocks because it is observed that usually the scorpions are uh, having that particular slender body and it, those can easily hide under the very uh, small cracks also. So we have to uh, remove such rocks and piles from uh, in and around the house. We do not store the uh, uh, firewood in or near the houses. Uh, we should fill the cracks around the doors and windows. Uh, clothes, shoes, gloves should be checked before wearing and we should sleep under the mosquito nets because uh, there are chances that uh, uh, 
the insect any insects including this part they can easily enter into our pets and they can have this thing then we should remove the grass or uh, tree branches hanging near the roof because usually uh, it happens that the birds they uh, uh, they used to eat these uh, insects and if they uh, those insects are uh, especially the scorpions they can be captured by those birds and it will be uh, carried to the roof and uh, then the uh, from the roof those scorpions can enter into the uh, house if uh, there are some such uh, plant branches and other uh so uh coming to the conclusions the syndrome of the scorpion sting is complex and is very variable uh, it uh, its management uh, is sometimes difficult and seriously invulnerable patients need icu care it is always desirable to use anti venom rays from the local species but uh, it is it is not available then uh, polyvalent anti venom should also be used uh, with the correct dose Uh, integrated approach is also needed in case of uh, scorpion sting because uh, we have observed several medicines. We have seen uh, that several medicines, uh, that is Ayurvedic medicines, including agadas and some household remedies, are very useful in uh, scorpion sting, especially to reduce the pain, swelling, and uh, uh, itching in uh, scorpion stings. So the conventional medicines along with the Ayurveda is a better approach uh, in case of uh, scorpion. uh scorpion hen envenomation it is always underestimated because uh, we always say that there are no fatalities but it is not so in few uh, venomous species the fatalities are still observed and uh, there are several cases where uh, there are the uh, chances that the patient suffers from the scorpion attacks so uh, we should not underestimate it then the scorpion uh, st uh, sting uh, as mentioned in ayurveda can be treated with several medicines and uh, those medicines if we have it definitely we can use it and uh, uh, it's always advisable to keep a uh, few agadas such as bilwa di agada the shang agada the shuji di agada at our home so that we can uh, immediately use those medicines uh, most of these medicines are also can be applied externally at the site of the sting and uh, can uh, definitely reduce the symptoms of the patients so these are the few uh, cases uh, where uh, the treatment of bilwa di agada and dashanga agada was given including the external sindav uh, dara and uh, the results were uh, observed very significant to find that uh, these medicines especially the external dara was very helpful in reducing the swelling and pain of the patient so here also we can see that uh, very uh, nice results were observed in the uh, edema which was there in the patient at the sting site the edema was also reduced and including the swelling was also reduced. there also we can see that the swelling was very reduced and uh, so these are the references and uh, thanks for to the organizers once again for providing this opportunity to deliver this lecture on scorpion sting i know this was uh, kind of uh, very fast and uh, the information was given in a very short uh, time so i may not be able to convey all the uh, uh, clinical part very uh, properly but uh, definitely i think that uh, few researches which were conducted uh, those were uh, will be helpful to the you know, students and uh, the practitioners so finally i'm thankful to the organizers and uh, i will be more than happy to answer the uh, qu uh, questions if uh, there are any and uh, this is my email id so if uh, in case i am not able to answer it properly i will be trying to reply it on your email also so if you uh, can uh, send me email i will try to reply to thank you thank you one and all Thank you sir
thank you for your uh, enlightening speech regarding classification epidemiology anatomy various contemporary as well as classical and traditional uh, uh, points regarding scorpion sting uh, sir we are having some queries uh, would you like to answer it right now yes sir definitely sir yes okay so uh, there is dr shubha she is asking uh, right now is it possible to do mantra chikitsa in vrishikdam in uh, day to day practices right now or is there any uh, mantras which is available for chikitsa yes uh, actually uh, to be frank i do not have any personal experience on mantra chikitsa but uh, there are some mantras uh, if we go through gautamiya kashyap sanhita which is the classical text which is having only mantra chikitsa in it so there are few mantras which are uh, indicated in case of scorpion sting that is gautamiya kashyap sanhita it is not usual kashyap sanhita it is totally different and this gautamiya kashyap sanhita it includes only mantra chikitsa for snake bites for scorpion stings and all the venomous conditions so in that uh, case there are few mantras and uh, of course the other traditional practitioners they are also having some uh, mantras with them and they are using it uh, but unfortunately i do not have any personal experience but uh, the cases which uh, we have seen uh, uh, in kerala also so uh, definitely there are certain effects of these mantras and uh, Uh, we can have other mis- further researches on it okay thank you sir uh, and second question is from dr deveshri uh, so in our day to day practice what are the common uh, procedures we can able to perform in vrushik dam chikitsa yes as it is already mentioned that uh, there are uh, dharas that can be used uh, that can be performed rutta and sandha white is very i mean household medicine that can be available then uh, as mentioned by uh, mahesh sir that is jirakta uh, and rutta uh, or including shunti and madhu or one paper was mentioned in uh, this uh, presentation also that tagar uh, shunti lepa so uh, these are the medicines that can be easily available and uh, we can perform those uh, procedures at our home also that is Uh, arkapatra dhara also that is also very uh, useful and it can be easily uh, prepared and it can be performed at the uh, is our home also okay thank you sir and last question is uh, is there any uh, traditional vaidyas which are applying any specific lepas uh, which is not explained in classical text uh, and easily able to prepare in day to day practice sir uh there are uh, definitely some lepas are there but uh, we do not have the reference and we do not know the contents also uh, because uh, most of the traditional practitioners they use means they do not prefer to disclose such uh, contents but uh, we have seen here in maharashtra also that uh, those practitioners they used to collect some medicines from the uh, forest and uh, they they used to prepare the uh, lepa and we can apply it. uh but uh, they usually do not uh, disclose the content but of course we can guess that uh, some of the medicines may be from our class itself itself that is it may be uh, ishwar muli as it is mentioned by uh, chaitra ma'am it is also indicated in spur testing also so ishwar muli may be there or there may be some arkapatra is there then uh, there may be this uh, tagara so these medicines can be easily uh, procured and can be applied including the vasana also it is also having some very good result in the case of scorpion stings thank you thank you very much sir for your time and elaborative and descriptive uh, detailed explanation regarding the scorpion stings and even research article sir just a minute we are having last one more question uh, can you explain more about preparation of arkapatra dhara by dr rashna yes yeah actually this arkapatra dhara uh, it was not prepared by me this uh, preparation is from uh, i think uh, uh ashtanga rudaya maybe i am not sure uh, this article was uh, published by uh, a scholar from the uh, parshnikadu that is uh, uh, parshnikadu vishtikitsa kendra i think uh, uh, 
uh, uh, he has prepared it and he has given it. I, I have gone through that particular uh, article and I have uh, found that uh, uh, it was the comparative study on uh, some kind of uh, other data. So, uh, but uh, definitely this uh, article, that link I have already given, uh, that can be uh, uh, is, uh, uh, the uh, uh, doctor can go through it and uh, they can have the process for preparation of that particular data. Thank you. I hope uh, all the de uh, delegates had clear with their doubts. And thank you. Thank you once again, sir, for your kind informative talk. Thank you. Now I will hand over uh, mic to our HOD, Dr. Ramgura Patil, sir. For thank you. Thank you, <clears throat> Dr. Nitin. So once again, uh, the last uh, event of this uh, today's session that is a vote of thanks is important and i will our regret to all all the participants so i would first tell about this har din har ghar ayurveda the the project launched by the central government and as well as our ayush department so regarding this uh, today's webinar the domstra we organized the first of all i would thank to our uh, dynamic president of our institute sjs dr n mukdum ayurvedic medical college the Dr. N. A. Magdum, sir. First of all, I thank the German president, sir. Then also the Sau Lalita and Magdum, Madam Treasurer of our institute. Then also I would thank to Dr. Mahesh Sawalgamat, sir, who is uh, today's uh, keynote addressee. And also the, I will thank the today's panelists, Dr. Chaitra H. Madam, and uh, they are important regarding the snake bite and their management, the clinical approach. And also the one more speaker of the, our today's, uh, that is uh, Sandeep Binorkar, sir. Thank you, sir. So today's there are scorpion bites and their approach regarding the IODP and as well as the allopathic use. So also, I will also thank to our beloved principal, sir, Dr. Ramesh Konkeri, sir, who encourages us and motivate us to uh, regarding this uh, webinar and arranging such a wonderful webinar. Thank you, sir. Also, my departmental colleague, associate professor regarding the Dr. Sachidanan, sir. Also, my colleague, one of the important, that is uh, Dr. Nitin Patil, sir. I will thank both of the, my colleagues. Thank you, sir. And also, regarding the one more of our uh, friends and the department of Kaiseki, sir, Professor Dr. Pradeep Dhawale, sir, and their team regarding this uh, webinar, arranging the, their one friend that is Zoom uh, uh, operating. And then also, Dr. our uh, officer, Dr. Bana, that is uh, Mr. Banas, sir, who is uh, organizing such a, all the technical regarding the Zoom and regarding the computer section department and the office department, what are the needs help to us? And the, the thank you, Banas sir also. And also the our department teaching, non-teaching, all the colleagues regarding the our uh, colleges, hospital staff, and the teaching, non-teaching faculties. Also, the last important thing, the important part, that is all the delegates uh, and in uh, grand success regarding this webinar, more than 600 participants uh, were presented at the uh, live streaming online presentation of this webinar from the throughout the India. And we conducted as a, this is a one uh, seminar and it's a huge success regarding the national seminar. The delegates from the all over the country, from the Delhi, from Karnataka, Maharashtra, UP, Uttarakhand, Himachala Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Assam, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Punjab, Haryana, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Bihar, Rajasthan, Telangana, these from all the states, all over the states from the nation, our they will delegates will present it <coughs> and attending this seminar. Also, I would like to thank all the teachers, all the academics and the practitioners also who join there and who is a lot of our uh, in Karnataka and Maharashtra and all over state, uh, all over uh, different states, uh, their uh, colleges, they will arrange as a live streaming regarding this webinar. So I would like to thank all the academics and their support, technical supports, and this uh, grand success of the, our webinar. So once again, I would thank all the all the participants, delegates, and the panelists, today's experts, panelists, keynote addresses once again. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Namaste.